Welcome to BioVet TV, folks. This month, we have how to tell a matching numbers car. We have Lance, who's going to introduce us to the car of the month. We get to meet Kevin Kane, who's our service director of this fine service facility that we have. And we're going to talk a little bit about convertible tops, how to put them up and down. I hope you enjoy this episode of BioVet TV. We'll see you on the road. convertible tops. If you have a question about your Corvette and want to know more, please let us know and we'll do a segment for you. Welcome to the Buy Event Minute. Today we're going to learn how to put down a power top and a few hidden gems in a C6 Corvette. Again, I'm John Ivankovic and if you have any questions about this you can always call. We'll start out with the top. The convertible top and a power top started in 2005 and runs till present. And it's actually very simple to pull down. I'm going to show you on the inside here, there's a lever. You simply pull down, twist, and give it a little tug up. On the, the driver information center, it'll say top not secure, and your windows will go down. That's letting you know that it's ready. There is a button on the, to on the dash on the left hand side. You simply push the button down for down and up for up. So we'll push the button down and you'll notice the top does its thing. When you hear the car ding, let go and you're ready to roll. All right, now that we have the top out, let me show you a couple few gadgets that all C6s have. As you know, most of these cars are very electronic. As we pull in a little closer, we'll notice this is the door handle for the door. Right here, if you pull up on that when you're in the car, that will let you out of the car as well. So you don't ever have to worry if this doesn't work, you always have a backup. As we move to the back of the vehicle, inside the trunk if you were ever to lose power in your c6 the only keyhole is right underneath the corvette logo right in the middle then on the inside of both the coupe and the convertible there's two pulls one here for the door so if you were to lose power all you'd have to do is pull this just like that and our door on the driver's side opens right up if your fuel door decided it didn't want to work, there's also the fuel door, and they're very easily marked for you to see. You pull that, and the fuel door will open up as well. Also, if something were to happen where somebody somehow got stuck inside a convertible, you can always pop the trunk from the inside as well. As we move around to the passenger side, we have the same button or lever here for the driver or for the passenger's door. Now, as you all know, on a C6, these are your key fobs. Well, if the battery goes out of the key fob, this right here holds the key fob to communicate directly with the car. So you're never really stranded anywhere. All right, now when you got home from the beach, that fun ride, all that fun stuff, all you need to do is push this lever up. As you'll notice, the tonneau cover is coming open. Mm -hmm. 
it goes down, we simply take that same lever, turn it, and let it go. This has been the Buy a Vet Minute. I'm John Ivankovich. Please feel free to call with any questions you have about any of your Corvette. I'd be glad to help you in any way I can. Thank you. Welcome back, folks. Today we're going to sit with Kevin Kane, our service director here at BioVet. Kevin, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about what do you do when you get that Corvette home? The regular maintenance on a daily basis. I know I get asked quite frequently, you know, when I get it home, what should I do? What kind of oil should I put in it? Let's start with the first generation Corvettes, the C1s. What do you recommend for oil? Uh, C1s, uh, back when those cars were introduced, they ran like a straight 30 weight oil. Uh, I recommend going with something like a 2050, 2050 oil. Uh, definitely if you're running flat tap at cam with the zinc additive, uh, the biggest thing that'll eat those cars up is not using the zinc additive with the flat tap at cams. Okay. And are there any other additives or something that should be added on a regular basis? Uh, other than the zinc and the oil, no. I don't know of anything that I would recommend. Uh, definitely some stable or some kind of gas stabilizer in the in the fuel uh, if the car's not going to be driven a, a, a lot. You know, the ethanol and things are really terrible the cars up. How frequently would you change it? The oil? Every 3,000 miles. Period. Or, or, or once a year. Uh, okay. A lot of people don't drive the, the C1s yeah. 3,000 miles a year. So so once a year or 3,000 miles. Okay. And anything with uh, spark plugs or transmission fluid or anything like that? Uh, really as needed. Uh, transmission fluid, uh, again, probably 30,000 miles, but again, uh, time's going to come before the miles come. Uh, spark plugs, points and things, just, just as needed on those cars. Oh, great. Um, and for the second generation, the C2s? The C2s, same thing. I'd recommend a 2050 oil, definitely with the zinc additive if you're running the flat tappet cam in it. Uh, a good uh, fuel additive, uh, ethanol preventer, water preventer. And you said the flat tap at cam. Is there a way for somebody to be able to tell if they're running that or not? Yeah, flat tap at cam is going to be pretty standard in all those cars until you get into like a 327, 365 horse running solid lifter, solid lifter cam. Oh, okay. Most of the other ones are going to be a flat tap at cam. And I'm going to go back to the C1s just real quick. If you, for example, have a Fuley, a 57 that's a Fuley or a 58 that's a Fuley, mm -hmm. is there any special... You're definitely going to get have to get a rice gas. Uh, regular premium gas will not run in those fuel injected cars. The older ones, you're just not going to get any performance. Uh, we've had in the shop where we can't even get the cars to start on a premium gas. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to have the race gas. And is it race gas something that you would buy somewhere, or is it an additive you put in? Uh, it's a, the additive adding octane boost. I would not recommend that. You're going to have to find somebody that that offers a race gas local racetrack. Uh, a couple gas stations here and there. It's going to be, depending on where you're at, it's going to be a local thing you're going to have to find. And again, that's for our specialty fuel units, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Now on the C2s, the big blocks, do they require any special kind of... Pretty much the same as the small blocks. Oh, 20, 2050 with a zinc additive for the flat tap at camps. And our points and plugs kind of the same as the same, needed? As needed. Um, or maybe once a year you want to have somebody take a look at those? Yeah, I mean, just, just keep an eye on them. Depends on, it really depends on mileage, John. Uh, you know, a lot of people in the C1s and C2s probably don't do 5,000 miles a year on those cars. Uh, but then again, <clears throat> if you get away from the mileage, sometime from sitting, you have problems with the points and things. So, uh, you know, they'll, they'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> and the third generation, any changes for that? Nope, just about the same. Okay. Just about the same. Now we can run our premium gas in those cars. Yes, if it's not fuel injected, old uh, premium gas would be my recommendation. Okay. Uh, anytime you could find uh, a local place that has the non ethanol is ultimately the best thing to run. Sure. Uh, they just wreak havoc on the carburetors on those cars. The ethanol really, really chews them up. And then we move to our fourth generation car. Uh, which changed a little bit, so yeah, on the on the C4s, uh, starting in 84, I would recommend a 1030 synthetic oil, uh, which obviously you can get some more mileage out of it. About every 5,000, I'd recommend changing that. Uh, transmissions and rear diffs, again, keep an eye on them around 30,000 miles. Probably get that stuff changed out. Now, sometimes you don't know whether or not your 92 or 90 Corvette has had synthetic in it before. 
Um, is there a way to tell that, or do you recommend going right straight to a synthetic if it hasn't had? Personally, I would go right to a straight synthetic is what I would recommend in those cars. Okay. And then as far as your plugs and things like that, any other special recommendations there? Uh, again, uh, you know, C4s, I would say every thirty to 40,000 miles you should be looking at, at tune-ups on those cars, uh, checking them out. Uh, obviously in 92 they went to the OptiSpark, so uh, as long as it's running all right, I wouldn't recommend getting into that. That can be a costly, costly undertaking. Okay. And then our fifth generation vets, obviously we're getting newer and newer. Our fifth, sixth, and seventh generation are pretty much the same yep. as far as what we would recommend as far as maintenance. Yeah, 10, 1030 synthetic uh, transmissions and, and rear differentials at 60,000 miles. Uh, tune up on those cars as far as plug goes, not to 100,000 miles. So. Okay. Great. Well, Kevin, I certainly appreciate it, and I do know that actually we've started doing not just Corvettes. Uh, any GM vehicles. Wow. We actually service all GM vehicles now. That's great. Well, if you have any questions or need anything, always feel free to give us a call, 770-414-5552. We'll see you all on the road. Thank you so much to Kevin Kane for helping us with our maintenance issues on our cars. And don't forget, folks, we do all Chevy products in our service center. And now, the car of the month with Lance Elliott. Lance Elliott here with MyVet, featuring the car of the month, this absolutely beautiful 2012 Corvette Grand Sport. This car is a 3LT, absolutely loaded with every factory option you can possibly put on it. And with spring right around the corner, I don't know what says summertime fun like a red Corvette convertible. The uh, previous owner of this vehicle had spent no, spared no expense with the detailing of the interior engine compartment. Um, I mean, it's just tricked out like you would not believe. Absolutely beautiful what he did inside the, uh, the engine compartment here with this beautiful Corvette. So two, if you look inside the car, absolutely pristine, loaded there again with all the factory options, heated seats, navigation, uh, with power seats, with power lumbar, heads up display, six uh, paddle shift transmission, 436 horsepower engine, uh, upgraded Lloyd's floor mats, which is very expensive, the previous owner did that himself. The car is absolutely as new condition, showing only 12,000 miles. Getting to the rear, a lot of people wonder about trunk space in a Corvette. Trunk space is actually really great, good size for a, for a two-seater sports car. Plenty of room to, you know, go out of town to the beach for the weekend, get a couple of suitcases or a golf bag in here, and have uh, all the fun in the sun you want with a beautiful car. Folks, there again, my name is Lance Elliott with BuyVet.net, and I would love to show you this car of the month or any other Corvette you've been dreaming of. My cell phone is 404-441-2037, and feel free to call me anytime, day or night, and I'm here for you. Thanks so much for watching, and looking forward to hearing from you or seeing you in person. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining us at Corvette TV. Always remember, if you have a topic you want to see, let us know. And always remember, we have a bunch of great salesmen here. This is Keith Lothrop, who just joined us. Keith, say hey. Hey, everyone. Look for him in the videos and some of our shows to come.